GM, what's Gucci, Mitch? Oh, eggs. How you doing, dog? Good. Um, my favorite, my actual favorite part of the week was you coming down to Austin for 24 hours. We got some lunch. And uh, yeah, hook them horns. <laughs> what uh, happened at that lunch? Bull, you blew my the, mind. You blew my fucking mind at that lunch. You, like, <laughs> I thought I was in a lunch mind. portal, dude. The bulls, the bulls had... The bulls had uh, had been out that morning, and I, I was not Match looking at the, in. yeah, the all the ATF inflows, and I don't know. I think something came up, you know, like about the price, and I was just like, yeah, what is it like? Still mid fifties, because I'm just so crazy focused on Eclipse right now. Well, you specifically you were... said you specifically said we still have forty percent to go to the all time yeah, high. That's I right. thought you were fu- I thought you were fucking with me. As of the last time, the last time I've had this moment where I thought I was just in a fucking like total glitched out uh, portal was when we were in Miami and you you were getting just sandwiched on some meme coins, and I looked at your phone. On the contract, you <laughs> and I just watched it. I, I watched the, the man, but it's straight the piece. Oh, that this is how I felt at this moment. The same thing, yeah, surreal. So, the, yeah, the context six, was 65, 65 was, was completely for like a, I just was like, there's no, there's no way, you know, over some tacos. And it was, I, I was like, you know, it's hard, it's, it's weird because you're like happy that it's happening but it's it's like it's like weirdly disconnected and you're like damn it i didn't you know i wasn't max bidding yesterday um so yeah it's crazy man we're only i mean first day of march 2024 um you know big numbers seem like they're on the way yeah, I mean, the the ETF inflows have been wild. The, the, there's always the saying of, like, don't fight, you know, don't fight the Fed. Don't fight the ETFs. Don't fight, you know, bigger power than yourself. And it's no doubt that these ETFs have, have brought the absolute max bidding volumes. The very interesting thing is on Monday, <clears throat> it matched the launch volume, which is unheard of for an ETF to, like, match the launch day volume. Um, at a later point in time. And then the next day, it 3x the volume. And so, yes, that was a lot of trading back and forth. It wasn't necessarily just buys. But the fact that there's that trading volume above 60,000, it's going to get coiled and it's going to consolidate at what was previously all-time high. Also, I don't know if you feel this at all, but like, and and maybe it's just a, a little bit of PTSD from the bear market or whatnot, but I don't remember 60,000 feeling this low before. And I guess it's just because it's not uncharted territory. But when we hit 64 on Bitcoin last bull, it was, it was peak euphoria. And now it's kind of like, huh, you know, 61 62 it's it's not even like pre euphoria it's like and it's like the positive anxious part of the cycle like just getting out of depression of the cycle positive anxiety like what you were mentioning you're happy but you're also a little sad that you weren't max bidding it so a little left behind on what you could have had on the table um i think we hit euphoria at 120 it's pretty obvious where it's we're at base three here. It's pretty obvious. Like we're about to, we're about to double up. Um, and to have this volume and this bid activity at these levels is wild. But how do you feel about the 60,000 number compared to how you felt about it in, in, uh, 21? I mean, I was laser eyes. Like, so it was, like a hundred, a hundred, you know, like the whole, the narrative and the stack to flow and all that stuff that, you know, super cycle, right? Like we were, we were drunk and we were euphoric, but we were drunk. And, and I think then what we found out was that, that a lot of that price, those price levels were inflated 
by various market participants, right? And it was unsustainable, became a bubble, right? Like, so like we were all just like, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know about everybody, but I, I was definitely thinking that there was a few more legs up to go. Um, now, yeah, it just seems like there's a lot of work to be done. It's hard. It's hard to get too excited. Generally, like with the way that the world is right now. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of growing lack of faith in the dollar. And it's, you know, I, I, I have kind of mixed, mixed feelings about the fact that, you know, people are, are, are trying to take shelter in Bitcoin, for instance, and versus like there was all this additional liquidity in the market through the pandemic and all the stimulus and that had to go somewhere, you know, now I think there's, there, there is that real kind of that alternative use case, you know, sound money and then flowing down, down into the rest of the, of the, of the crypto markets. That's where it's like, this definitely feels like a different bull than we've seen before. And so I'm just cautious about like, you know, again, trying like, thinking about like the macro economic components of that and what it all means, but still like, you know, yeah. I mean, we're, it seems like we're going to pump through all time high soon. You know, it seems like we're going to have, um, you know, some nice alt and mean coin seasons. Um, yeah. So I'm here for it for sure. They're serious to sum up a little bit about what you're saying or not to sum up, but to go a little bit like deeper on it. There's serious tailwinds that come from this bull. Like the participants that are in this time, it does create uh, serious reactions. And I almost want to say consequences. Like this time around, we have countries that are denominated by Bitcoin. Like this time around, we have MicroStrategy, who's been permeable Buffett of the bits, just crushing on conviction we have reddit holding crypto we have tesla holding crypto we have companies that have vehicles to hold crypto we have companies that are moving from delaware to texas on like elon's notion you have people that will run that that crypto position holding playbook from both michael saylor and elon we have these different things now where like before it was just the and I hate to politic I hate to politicize it because I'm not a political person, but it the last bull did get a lot of libertarian esque folks, um, or like the the uh, politically charged folks pretty wealthy, and that didn't sit well with with the finance narrative. But now it's different. There are many lanes of beneficiaries, and the most important is that we have boomers to be beneficiaries within their 401ks, which is one of the best staking mechanisms ever invented in the financial market in this world because you load up this 401k, you can't touch it unless you get penalized, heavy on taxes, heavy gas fees up until a certain age. And then when you get your hands on it, you are gated by a steward that we like to call a CPA that makes damn sure you only pull out as much as you need to be taxed as low as you can. And that's the best manually driven, systematic staking system that has ever been invented. And that is where the orange milk, the blossom boomer coin is gonna be sitting. And that is crazy because you look at Fidelity in Canada has been recommending that every single portfolio, every single portfolio holds one to 3% in Bitcoin, one to 3% in Bitcoin, one to 3% in Bitcoin on 200 Bs asset under management that is at minimum $2 billion and can absorb a $1.5 billion entire trust dump from GBTC. Fucking bullish. Bullish. It's going to start happening here faster than we can 
we're prepared for. Like, I just don't know how else to say it. Like, we're we're in for a wild ride. You know, I I think you you shared with me the news about um, Robin Hood yesterday and Arbitrum. Um, yeah, and Metamask. You know, yeah. So shit coining. Metamask, Metamask is, is about to airdrop airdrop coins just to Robinhood wallet users. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're entering, I mean, like gam- gambling is at all time high, you know, I think people are more and more people are waking up to the fact that this is all just one big scam. Um, you know, the, the like standard path of living that we've been espoused, you know, um, and, and, and this, you know, and this are leads us to it. Yeah. People are going to opt out. They're going to unsub so hard. And that is what's going to make this the most hated rally that I've ever witnessed. I've never witnessed a hated rally. Really? I mean, maybe you could call 21 a hated rally. Not like this though. This is going to be ball busting. And Specifically, like, I think this is a good segue to talk about financial nihilism. I'm like, I'm perma bullish on this concept because it resonates so deeply with me. And I think what's really fascinating about this topic is we're going into a new era of finance and it is going to be deemed financial nihilism. And I have a very interesting, like, retail perspective on it, but you have a very interesting VC venture capital perspective on it. And I remember, like, when we, I remember during the bear, um, when we were in Miami for the Bitcoin conference, and then over summer, we had two distinct conversations. One conversation while we were in Miami is you were talking to a specific investor. I don't know if they were angel or part of a, a venture firm, and they were just allocating meme coins every day, just deploying capital, steady lack of capital of these meme coins for like a 10, 15 X. Um, I found that really peculiar, really interesting. I didn't think that that side of the space was going so hard on the meme coin side. And then also in summer, I'd made a comment about like retail, like max bidding this thing. And you, you had kind of replied like, where's retail? Like, what are you talking about retail? Retail's dead, retail's drained, retail's rinsed. And for the most part, retail is rinsed. But I think we're getting to the point where it doesn't matter. And I kind of made this point to you at that moment uh, that it doesn't matter how much retail is rinsed because the price to bid these things is only getting lower. You know, the zeros that get laid in front of the ability to buy a share of Bonk or buy a share of not with, with hit a buck today. But other than that, it's like these, these entry points are so low. Leverage is so available that it doesn't matter how rinsed retail is because they're swinging for the fences. And I think we both at that point didn't really understand the other person's perspective. Like I thought it was wild that you told me about it. Uh, Like a person from the venture space or an angel was doing what they were doing. And you thought it was wild that I was saying the retail doesn't need any money. And here we are, all stars are lined up and we are entering this era of financial nihilism, which nihilism means it's basically existentialism with a dystopian negative outlook. And financial nihilism is a two-part term that is being interpreted as uh, young Gen Zers and younger millennials miss the boat on being financially secured by property or owning a home and they don't have enough money with these interest rates to buy these homes. The median home price uh, divided by average income and medium income is atrocious. It has people feeling underwater. So when they have 30 K 40 K in their bank account and savings, they can't do anything with it. They can't go get a home loan with it. They are, better off allocating it to shit coins and meme coins and swinging for the fences and making them their lives better by a 4X, 5X multiple. And I can say that in 2012, 
to 2016 when I was living in San Francisco. You know, my rent was 4,500. My salary was six figures, but rent was 4,500. Going out was expensive. Drinking was expensive. And the amount of money that I saved could not keep up pace with buying a home in the Bay Area. So I was financially, nihilistically deploying capital into the stock market using options, buying stock, doing things like that. When I would get raises from companies, it was literally going right back into the U.S. risk asset, asset market. So I was, I was acting in this way, but it was very rare. Like everybody I talked to thought I was an absolute risk hoarding degenerate, could not believe that I could hold the jobs that I could hold because I was that much of an outlier. I was that much left curving this, but that's not left curve anymore. That's the norm. That is mid curve R us. You know, sports betting, poker, um, stock market, crypto. Yeah, it's it's grim out there. You know, I think people are. I don't. I think very few people have it better than than they did. And you know this kind of when you when you have a lot less to lose it's and you have these um ability you know the ability to swing for the fences on some of these things um all it's going to take is a few more of these dog coins getting into mainstream news you know like like shib did right like the that billion dollar bag holder like that was the biggest advertisement and it's like you know, if I can go place some bets and they could, you know, where else are you going to get 10 to 100x in the real world? You know, like it just yeah. doesn't exist. And that's why that, that's kind of like when you talk about the, the VC thing, like venture capital is just gambling, you know, like you're hoping to, you know, you're hoping to get 100x in your portfolio and that, that, out of a hundred bets placed. And if you can have a better batting average than that, whether through deal selection or really good diligence or whatever it would be like you're, you know, you can increase that and that's material return on investment. And so if the diligence is now being able to, to like find the right meme or the right narrative or the combination of those two things, that can become super accretive in this digital era where our culture is really a, you know a unit of of measure then why would you place bets where there's executional risk you know like yeah. why would you trust a person when you can trust a meme Cause I believe in a yeah. meme, you know, I believe in a meme. It, like I, I can, I can understand that and I can, and I can forecast how that's going to operate within changes, changes in our culture. Maybe, maybe better than I can like a founding team um, that's trying to build a product. So yeah, yeah. Like, from the top I mean, down, it's just like, what, like, like, you know, this, we're in an incredible age of, of being able to participate in these opportunities and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that it's. I think it's beautiful, but it's also hyper disruptive. And in a time where our economy is still very, you know, volatile, right? We have like all time highs in the markets, and we have you know questionable job figures, and interest rates are still much higher than we're than we we've we've been used to. Like people still don't have their footing. And so I think now it's a time where this, you know, the, 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 um, combination of the, you know, the bullish cyclicality in the crypto markets, it really could, I mean, we, we're talking about not just linear shifts. We're talking about exponential shifts in the way that we think about the world from a financial perspective. And that's what I get back to. I mean, like, that's beautiful and amazing. And like, I'm here for it. And it's also kind of scary because, you know, we, 
we still live and operate in the physical world where, you know, we've got mortgages and we've got payments and we've got families that you can't just, you know, put on a ledger and store away, right? Like those, those things, those things are going to stick around. So it's definitely a weird time. Uh, I think it's easier if you're a, if you're a Gen Zer than it is if you're, and it's probably easier if you're a boomer too, because you're just looking at it as purely like a financial investment and a way to hedge against the dollar depreciating you're, or whatever You're hedging else. against your, hedging against your life expectancy. How easy. Yeah. But if you, if you're still expecting to live for, you have all these responsibilities and like, or, you know, OG kind of investments, like, how do you, like, you know, how, how do you, how do you weigh that, that, that trade off, you know, cause you can't just liquidate everything and go ship into meme coins if you have real world responsibilities. So it's a, it's definitely like, you know, it's a conflicting time for sure. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think the, the, you talk about the seismic shifts, they, they're going to happen. They're going to get completely unhinged. And, you know, the other thing you talked about was the, the execution risk. And, and I think when you look at venture capital and you look at who's throwing uh, capital at companies, like, it feels bad to put it on any human right now. And nobody is putting it on a single human. Like the day of trusting those humans to execute is gone. It takes way too much runway for that human to execute. There needs to be a product. There needs to be users. There needs to be a meta. There needs to be a trend. And it needs to be captured. And next plans are in motion. And the reality is, is like the attention span of everybody is getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So no one can hold on to it. Like friend tech is a great example of the boom and bust of the SoFi meta. They came up in, they captured so much ETH and transaction fees, so much ETH. They have runway for the next decade plus just to iterate on this and wait for that meta to reappear. But, you know, they, even them, they didn't need capital with how much they captured on transaction fees, but even them, they were going to need, you know, to give 20% of their company away for a pithy USD uh, multi-million dollar check. And, you know, that there, there's just this fine tipping point between execution risk in businesses and people and then ex execution risk in taking USD for equity when you're already on chain and using those things. For people who are listening to this, and they are scoffing at me the word meme coin shit coin or memes they are not clearly like understanding how deconstructed the idea of utility and value prop has gotten in the year of 2024 utility is a joke value prop is a joke PE ratios are absolutely like off and askew from what they normally were. It's all become a joke. And so the idea of like materializing that joke and rallying around happiness for financial economic mobility is a real ass thing. And people are going to be there. People are going to be baffled. They're not going to understand it. They are going to think everybody who makes money is lazy. They're going to think everybody who makes money is not smart. And the reality is like, that is the smart way to make your money the smartest way possible. Like everyone has grown up being indoctored by, you know, don't work for money, make your money work for you. Well, guess what? This is it. Like, this is how it's happening now. And people are going to laugh their ass off at people. But the reality is they let their money work for them in dog coins, cat coins, or depression. Yeah, what did Joe say? Yeah, dog coins to a billion or, uh, or depression. Yeah, I mean we're we're it gets gets back into like our AI chat, right? Like like we are we are not put here to work in the future. Um, and so the sooner we can start rethinking that and thinking about how we can 
put the least amount of effort into generating returns. I mean, it's here for us right now, literally, you know, like I didn't, I didn't farm enough airdrops, but like how, how much effort was that compared to like working a normal job, physical output, mental output, follow this short series of instructions. You'll get some little allocation of tokens. And in this particular time frame, these tokens are probably going to go up. And you can you can rotate those tokens into other tokens at very minimal cost and effort. And if you know what you're doing, you can sit back and literally print. And the more people that figure this out, the faster yeah. we're going to unsub we're going to have this unsubscription moment. And I don't yeah. and again, like I don't know how the rest of the world continues to rotate when the smarter, more forward thinking people are, are opting out of that process because then what does the rest of the world look like for that, for that, you know, subsequent time frame? Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, that's like, I, I can't solve that problem. I can just try to, I can just try to at least like benefit from understanding where these trends are, are taking us. Yeah, and I think that like the airdrop uh, meta that's going on right now, we're not going to see it like this ever again. Like I'm very convinced we're not going to see it like this ever again. We saw like fruitful airdrops have happened up until this point, starting in about 2019 to now. Um, but but everybody and their mom knows that the only way to get attention of active high impact, high velocity users are these airdrops. But what's unique about this is like, we're going into a super cycle. I've been through every single crypto cycle. I've been through every bull, every winter. We will never see a cycle. We have never seen a cycle like the one we're about to go into. We never had seen a bear like the one we just got out of. And we, the timing of these airdrops going into this cycle are going to be life-changing specifically with the people who are opting out unsubbing from everything real and locking into the matrix of these airdrops, taking these airdrops, staking them and the functions that are provided to stake them in, not having a W2 job where they're paying 35% taxes on that money, going long-term capital gains on these MFers and living like a boomer at the age of 22, 24, 26, 38, whatever it may be. We're not going to see this, like the timing lining up to all of this with the ETFs, with the havings, with transitioning out of a bear, with the airdrops, with the eclipse. We are completely, we are completely aligned right now like we've never been it's scary to be honest with you like my bags are packed and it's scary not a single mf or feels properly exposed right now not a single one in fact the maxis that are so loaded on one chain are coping so hard for that one chain that they're not diversified in others that's how scary it is like if you're a whale sitting on 500,000 E and that's it. You're coping for E because you're missing everything else. The diversification could, could hit you with. If you're a Bitcoin maxi, you're coping because you're missing diversification on everything else. Solana, everything else. If you're not spread across the three majors right now in whatever proportion you want to be, you are coping if you are not dishing dust into absolute lunacy, you're coping. If you're not buying into some of the strongest community armies right now that have made it to the nastiest, most grim, darkest, dim lit bear we've ever seen in our MF and lives, you are coping right now. <laughs> I mean, you say, yeah, you say scary. I, and I 
I think we should probably, you know, let this marinate for a minute, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Arguably what's scarier is what you just brought up with capital gains and the fact that you can go bust your ass at a normal W2 and have to pay more to the government than you would on the money you just have locked up sitting there earning for you. And that once people wake up to that, that, you know, like you, you mentioned micro strategy earlier and I, it's something that's always stuck with me, you know, besides all the rhetoric from Michael Saylor is he always talks about this like road to, to serfdom. And, and mm. that is, that is the road to serfdom in, in these highly volatile economic times with high interest rates. And if you're not maximizing or minimizing in this particular case, the amount that you have to pay in gas fees to use the network, you know, NGMI, straight up, NGMI. NGMI. Better increase that whiff That's bag. That's it. Increase the whiff bag. Whiff it a buck, man. I don't like whiff it a buck. I wish there was seven zeros in front of it. We need, I want to knock down more zeros, but uh, whiff it a buck. Send it to 10 now. That's a bad bet if the bag's checklist. About to burn back to back, flipping that cheap.